Hey everybody, it's Chris Sims here from ComicsAlliance.com and we are in the convention center at Comic-Con 2014 in sunny San Diego, California. We have a full crowd in the house today, but standing right next to me is the CCO of Archie Comics, the writer of Afterlife with Archie, the upcoming writer of the Sabrina series that was just announced, Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. Roberto, how are you doing today? I am doing great. We just had a great uh, Archie panel, which was uh, terrific. Very exciting stuff happening at Archie. Any big announcements at the panel as far as stuff that you're doing? Uh, well, we talked a lot about Dark Circle, which is obviously our, our our, one of our big initiatives right now, we're relaunching some of the Red Circle heroes, uh, starting with Black Hood, a new uh, Fox miniseries, and the thing I'm very excited about is a reimagined shield uh, who is going to be a woman. Yeah, that shield redesign, if you haven't seen it, it looks great. Yeah. I'm very, uh, very excited about it, that. I feel, like it, I feel like it almost came at a bad time because there were so many like really good redesigns of characters that hit yeah. all at the same time. But the shield, is that's a beautiful, beautiful redesign. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's kind of, uh, you know, th that character is such a tricky character. People have such affinity for shield. Uh, but I feel like this rebrand and this kind of reimagining, which is how John Goldwater uh, described it, really, really will set her apart uh, and is, is kind of the new patriotic hero for our time and our America right now. All right, so we've got that coming up, Dark Circle, yeah. the relaunch. Uh, tell me a little bit about the Sabrina book that's coming out. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, Afterlife with Archie has been a huge success. It's been critically acclaimed, probably the best comic to ever be based on a cover. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, although, I don't know, there's some good Silver Age DC books. Yeah. Uh, but. Did you expect Afterlife to be as well received as it has been? Uh, no, you know we all, we thought that it was. Uh, we were all really excited about the idea, and uh, we certainly put every effort to make the book as good as it could be. But I think the fan response has exceeded all of our expectations, uh, both in terms of people buying the book and in terms of kind of the critical response to the book. And very early on, even though she's only in a few pages of the first issue. Um, Sabrina was kind of a breakout character, uh, which is, uh, and she's, for various reasons, hasn't been that involved in the action of Afterlife, though issue six, which just came out, is a, is a Sabrina-centric issue, and she will kind of work her way back into the storyline. Uh, so we wanted to do, because it was a horror book, we, and because Sabrina is the closest thing Archie has to a traditional horror character, she's a teenage witch, her dad's a warlock, her mom is a mortal woman, um, we wanted to do something. I guess the easiest thing would have been to just spin her out directly uh, out of the pages of Afterlife, but that's too easy for us. So we kind of uh, are doing a period piece. It's set in the 60s, which is of course when Sabrina first came out. And it is a um, parallel storyline. So it's not the Sabrina that's in Afterlife. Um, and it's kind of her epic story. Um, it starts not when she's a teenage girl, but right when she's born. It's, it actually starts on her uh, first year old birthday party, uh, where all her aunts show up, uh, Hilda and Zelda. But it's a, it's a great book. Robert Hack is drawing it. It's, a, it's, it's very different from what Francesco's drawing on Afterlife, but it is, it is completely unique. I don't think there'll be another book that looks like it on the stands. And, uh, and it's a horror book. It's a full-on horror book. It's a little bit um, more psychological and a little bit, um, let's say, more subtle than Afterlife in the way that Rosemary's Baby is a little more subtle than, say, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, but, but I love it, and I think if you like Afterlife, you will love Sabrina. There's one thing you can't say about Afterlife, and that's that it's a little too subtle. Yeah, that is correct. That, that is, is correct. That is, a, that is a book where Archie beats his zombie father to death with a baseball bat. That is true. That is true. Uh, my question about Sabrina was, you mentioned that it's not in the same continuity yeah. as that word that everybody loves, yeah. continuity, as uh, Afterlife with Archie. Were there stories that when you were first plotting Afterlife that you were like, oh, and when Sabrina comes back, we're going to do this, that you then moved over to Sabrina so you could focus on other things? Uh, absolutely not. You know, the issue of, of Sabrina that just came out um, uh, kind of introduces a sort of love, almost love. Well, not almost. It's a Lovecraftian element to the to the afterlife uh, universe. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft is a character in that issue, and uh, Sabrina has a very nasty run-in with Cthulhu, um, uh, and that was never going to be part of the Sabrina um, uh, uh, series. I'm 
you know, a huge fan of witches and witchcraft and uh, demonology and, and movies about that. And I'm, frankly, I'm a huge fan of like the Salem witch trials. Like um, I've always been obsessed with that. So it was always going to be kind of a, like a New England witch, like a Nathaniel Hawthorne story or something like that. So, so they really did feel like different Sabrinas and different mythologies. So no, nothing that, that it's not like, oh, I would put this in Afterlife, but no, I'm gonna move it over to the Sabrina series. They really are two separate things. Sabrina, like I said, will be a part of Afterlife moving forward, but it will be this kind of more Lovecraftian Sabrina as opposed to the kind of more, um, uh, you know, witch, you know, traditional witch and occult based Sabrina that's in, that's in her own book. Now, regular Comics Alliance readers will know that I am a big fan of Archie. Okay. Uh, I love Archie comics, and I particularly love a lot of the stuff from the 60s and 70s when Archie got a little weird. Yes. Uh, there's this one issue of Josie and the Pussycats okay. where Josie is possessed by the devil. Yes. This is not like one of the Al Hartley Spire Christian comics. It is a full-on Josie and the Pussycats where Josie is just possessed by the devil, yeah. and then they exercise her at the end yeah. of it. When are we going to see a double-possessed Josie in Afterlife? Um, that's a very good question. You will see Josie and the Pussycats in Afterlife. Uh, I can tell in, uh, in the, the, the title of the third arc is uh, called Archie is Legend. They are, <laughs> they are, they are not possessed, uh, but they are, uh, they are go we are going to be dealing with a very big horror trope. Uh, that title may give you a clue what that trope will be. Um, I know that issue you're talking about. I actually thought that there was a story in which Betty was possessed. Are you sure it wasn't Betty? I know that there's a Josie story. There's probably also a Betty story. I can, I can tell you that we will be, I don't know that this is going to be the title, but in the Sabrina book, there is going to be a story that is something akin to the possession of Betty Cooper. I don't know if that's going to be the title, but that is something that we are going to be doing in the Sabrina book. So in the Sabrina book, you are going to be bringing in Archie, Betty, Veronica, and the other characters as... I, yeah, there, in the first issue, which will be an, uh, an extra... It will be 40 pages. You will see other Archie characters, uh, especially Betty and Veronica, in a way that you had not seen them before. I'm not going to say that they belong to a rival coven in Riverdale, but they might belong to a rival coven of witches in Riverdale. Um, and you're hearing that for the first time. Exclusive. ComicsAlliance.com. Your source for exclusive Betty and Veronica Coven news. All the Archie witchcraft you can handle. Yes, exactly. So is there a, like a tonal difference between like the, the sort of 1960s versions and the, the more horror movie catty versions that are in, uh, in Afterlife? Um, yeah, there again. It's it's a little more. Um, if you've ever seen the movie, the little girl, who, the Jodie Foster movie, the little girl who lived down the lane, to, or L Rosemary's Baby, something we talk about all the time. That it's definitely much more like that. The horror is a little more at the at the uh, on the fringes of the panels, and 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 it really and it is a coming of age story. I mean, so is Afterlife in a weird way. I can always uh, say to John Goldwater that Afterlife with Archie is really a story about kids and their pets. I mean, it's, you, like I said, you literally have a kid beat his father to death I with know, a baseball bat it's and it's pretty, like it's escape. primal and mythic. There's, there's like, there's a mythology yeah. and, there, and there's like a metaphor yeah. and then there's like just doing the it literal, on the thing. I know, it's almost like Oedipus in a weird way. Um, we, we do some of that stuff, but it, it is, it is um, like, uh, like if you just saw that movie that just came out, Boyhood, you know, that was really a character's journey from he was 12 and he till 18. That's what Sabrina is more like. Like it is, it is kind of her slow progression into the head witch that we all want her to become. So it's a little, it's not that it's more slice of life, but it is quieter in a way than Afterlife. I mean, it has to be. There's a zombie apocalypse in Riverdale. It's, you can't get louder. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll let you go in just a second. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, in Afterlife, you you know you had uh, the very heart wrenching scene with Archie's dog. Yeah. Uh, you have the scene with Archie's father. Obviously, you have the uh, the blossoms. Yeah. Is there anything that you've written and you've been like, I should maybe pull back on that a little bit, or is Afterlife the kind of book where it's just like, no, I need to go further and further and further? Um, we have some crazy stuff coming up. Uh, in issue seven, we have a crazy event involving the bro blossoms. In issue eight, uh, we have a very, it's a, it's a Christmas story, and it's a, a, a very dark story from Riverdale's past. Can I stop you for one yes. second? Does Jingle show up? Uh, 
jingle will show up, but not until issue 10. 10, 11, 12 builds to the end of, the, of, the, of that, and you're gonna meet a lot of kids that you haven't, we haven't touched upon in those three issues. Jingle, of course, is the Christmas elf yeah. who shows up in Riverdale to hang out with the kids yeah. who are just like, all right, Christmas elves, yeah. that's something we have. Um, and let me just say, if you know about Jingle, you are indeed a hardcore Archie fan. You are that person. I am that guy. I, I, uh, I know about Jingle. I know about the Sugar Plum Fairy. I know about Cricket Odell, yeah. Cousin Marcy. I know about them all. They're my favorites. Exactly. Well, Roberto, I'm excited to hear about that. I am especially excited about the idea of an Afterlife with Archie Christmas special. That is, that is like six kinds of up my alley. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you for taking some time out Such at Comic Con. Pleasure. Great, great chatting with you. Roberto Aguirre-Sacasa of Archie Comics. Sabrina is out. Uh, first week in October. First week in October. Afterlife, uh, volume one is available now. Definitely check it out. It is a great comic.